Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. This is Vincent Chan. Uh, thanks for coming to this uh, lecture video. In this lecture, we're going to start a new series on the fundamental of semiconductor devices. So let me start with an introductory lecture around the semiconductor material. Introduction to semiconductor materials, silicon and beyond. Silicon and beyond. Have you thought about uh, why it's called Silicon Valley? We know the Silicon Valley is, when you talk about the innovation and the startup, the first place you will think about is the Silicon Valley. But what's the story behind the name, the Silicon? Why it's called Silicon Valley? Well, we can start with the Silicon from sand to Silicon. Uh, thanks for the intel and think about and, and come up with this the, the slogan kind of this from sand to silicon and left hand side is the sand in the middle is the semiconductor fabrication process on the right is the silicon ingot a silicon ingot the pure silicon ingot and then from silicon wafer if you cut the ingot then it's a, a, a wafer then it becomes the wafer. The wafer could be a six inch, eight inch wafer or 12 inch wafer, 300 millimeter wafer diameter. And then it becomes the front silicon wafer on the left to, it's called IC, an integrated circuit. An integrated circuit. The different types of electronic component, let's say the resistor, capacitor, inductor, bipolar junction transistor, dial, or metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, all integrated in a small chip. So it's called integrated circuit. And then from IC chip, the integrated circuit chip, to a circuit board. On the left side is the chip. You see the chip is mounted, connected to the pin of a chip. On the right hand side, it's the chip on a circuit board. So for the semiconductor material, the point I want to make is the several slides from the sand to silicon, and from silicon to integrated circuit, and from the IC chip to a circuit board. So the underlying material behind this technology is silicon. But if you like look at the big picture of about the semiconductor material, you can classify it into two big categories. The first is the element semiconductor. The second category is the compound semiconductor. So remember this, the semiconductor material can be grouped into two big categories, element semiconductor and uh, compound semiconductor. The two most famous the element semiconductor material, the first one is germanium. And then the next one is silicon. It's all in the element semiconductor material category. But in the compound category, let's say the gallium and the arsenide. So it's called gallium arsenide. And then gallium and the nitrogen can form a compound called gallium nitride. So gallium arsenide and the gallium nitride also be is, belongs to the category of the compound semiconductor, element and the compound. Let's start with the element semiconductor, silicon. So silicon, valence electron is four. On the left hand side is the native silicon material, the crystal structure, crystal structure. If you take out the four, the four green ball, Right, green atom. So it's called phase 
face, there's a center, right? It's called face center qubit. And the number of this face center qubit in within a qubit is four. The number of atoms located within, because you can count the, the six faces and the eight corners, right? Eight is one eighth times eight is one. And six faces is half. So half times six is three. One plus three is four. If you add another group of four and uh, intersect with each other, another face center qubit, it becomes the crystal structure of the silicon. We call the diamond, it's called diamond structure. The crystal, crystal structure of the silicon as diamond is called diamond structure, uh, which is which consists of the two face center qubit structure. Crystal structure of silicon. But same thing with germanium. It's the same structure for the germanium. Germanium also, they are also germanium is also uh, belongs to this category. The, Diamond structure. On the left hand side is the native germanium material, but it's quite expensive. It's quite expensive. So on the left hand side is germanium, on the right hand side is silicon. So why silicon? Why not germanium valley? Why is called Silicon Valley? Several reasons. Well, number one. As I just mentioned, Germania is very, the cost is very high, very expensive. If you want to get a pure Germania, it's very expensive, high material cost. Number two, it's a low band gap. I will teach you this in the upcoming lecture video, what's the band gap, what's the definition of band gap. But it's the low band gap. But if the material has the low band gap, when it comes to leakage current, the leakage current will be high. So low band gap and higher leakage current for device is no good. And germanium, if you germanium want to want want the oxide to be grown out of the germanium material, the quality from the germanium, the germanium oxide, no good quality. No good quality. But on the right hand side is the silicon. For the silicon, low material cost. Low material cost is, is, is cheap, okay? The earth is full of silicon, from sand, right? From sand to silicon, sand is cheap. And then it's the higher band gap compared to the germanium. So higher band gap, lower leakage current. The leakage current is much lower compared to the Germanian device. And then the last one is very expensive, is superior quality of silicon dioxide. So one silicon atom, and uh, if you come with the two oxygen atoms, it, it, it will form the glass. It's the silicon dioxide, superior quality of silicon dioxide. And for this, why, why, why this matter? Why oxide matters? For this device, it's called, it's, it's very important the electronic device called MOSFET. In the MOSFET, just, just, just read this. Metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. So the second word for this term is called oxide. So superior quality of the oxide from the semiconductor material is crucial. And silicon can meet this criteria. So this device, metal on the top, oxide, silicon dioxide, and the bottom is the P-type semiconductor. So it's the sandwich structure, three layer, metal oxide semiconductor, MOSFET. So silicon can, can form a superior quality of the oxide, but germanium doesn't. Germanium can't. Germanium can't. Let me tell you a little bit more on, on, on this. From silicon to an 8-bit processor, 
this goal has been achieved. Forty is in nineteen seventy five. Okay, so this is the the very famous is the uh, in the Chip uh, Hall fan uh, from the IEEE. So it's a com from the Computer History Museum. This is the eight bit uh, microprocessor. It's called six five zero two, fabricated, produced by a company called Mars. Technology again. The metal. The the reason why they call the mass technology metal oxide semiconductor. I just want to emphasize how important it is to have a good quality oxide for a certain type of semiconductor material. I'm still trying to explain why it's called Silicon Valley. All right, from silicon to a a CPU, a processor, a eight bit. Microprocessor. You know which computer used this processor? The very famous one. All right, from silicon mass, from silicon mass to Apple II in two years. In 1977. So this Apple II is powered by the six o six five o two. Processor and underlying technology, silicon mass technology. Right? Let me tell you another one. iPhone. Let's fast forward for forty-one years, from nineteen seventy-seven to two thousand eighteen. Right? iPhone XS came out from silicon fin fat to iPhone. This is on the left hand side is the iPhone XS uh, was launched in 2018. The underlying technology for this is the silicon fin fat. This is the seven nanometer fin fat. Again, the fat is the field effect transistor. The fin fat is turn the two dimensional, two dimensional mass fat into the three dimensional one. It's a fin fat. It's um, invented by the two、uh, professor at UC Berkeley. So this is fabricated by the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company (TSMC). Seven nanometer fin fat technology. Again, the underlying technology is silicon fin fat. Still, the silicon, silicon fin fat. And then let's move on to another type of material called compound semiconductor. Let me give you one example: gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide. The crystal structure, crystal structure of the gallium arsenide is zinc blend. On the left hand side is the gallium arsenide wafer. On the right is this crystal structure. So still, it's the two. Face center qubit, but one face center qubit is from the gallium, and another FCC face center qubit is from another atom called arsenate. So it's the two FCC compound together, gallium arsenide. So what's special about this? Can silicon do everything? Can silicon do everything? No, the gallium arsenide has two things that silicon is short of. Number one, electromobility. Gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide has a very high electromobility. For silicon, I remember it's the thirteen hundred, all right. But gallium arsenide can reach to the eight thousand, so which is around around how many times? Six times higher than the silicon. So when a material have a higher the 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 mobility, 
the electron can move faster, that means what? High speed. So see, this device is called HELMT. It's called High, high Electron Mobility Transistor. High Electron Mobility Transistor. It's the high speed transistor, gallium arsenide. The underlying material is gallium arsenide. But on the, right, left, on the right hand side, if you study deeper about the so-called band structure, and NH band structure, and then you will know the silicon is the indirect band gap material. But for the gallium arsenide, it's direct band gap material. So optoelectronics, laser dial. So for the gallium arsenide, you can, you can produce the laser dial, opto semiconductor laser from gallium arsenide. It's a laser dial, semiconductor laser from gallium arsenide. So two important characteristics compared to the silicon. Number one, very high electromobility. Number two, optoelectronics. Optoelectronics. Let me show you another compound called gallium nitride. Gallium nitride. So for the gallium nitride, on the left hand side is the gallium nitride, gallium nitride technology. It's called wurzite. The, the, this is the crystal structure. The yellow one is the gallium atom. The white one is a nitrogen atom. When it comes to the gallium nitride, so it's inevitable, inevitable to mention these three gentlemen. Isamu Akasaki, uh, Hiro Amano, and the Shuji Nakamura. These three gentlemen won the 2014 Nobel Prize in physics. Why? Because the light emitting dial. The blue night for the invention of the blue LED, the light emitting dial. The blue LED, the basically, let me let me just, just quickly teach you this. This is the P and junction dial. The, the first, the top is the hole, the majority carrier is hole. On the bottom, the end uh, is the electron, right? So when you forward bias a dial, when you forward bias the dial, then the, the hole and the electron will meet at the junction. And then when they meet together, they recombine, they join. When they join, they recombine, you will release the energy. And then the energy will turn from, will be converted from the electron energy, electric energy to the optical energy. And the spectrum of that energy, if you learn the modern physics, E equals H mu, Planck constant times the frequency. Then you can calculate the wavelength is falls into the blue light wavelengths. So this is the blue light emitting dial. And these three gentlemen, the light emitting dial consists of the several different layers of gallium nitride. It's from the gallium nitride. Three gentlemen managed to increase the efficiency of the LED. All right, so this lecture, there's a one learning objective because in the upcoming lecture, it's all about silicon. And then I want you to know why the silicon, what kind of important characteristic associated with silicon. Compared with the germanium, high material cost, the low band gap, and also the poor quality oxide, the silicon has the low material cost, high band gap, low leakage current, and superior quality of silicon dioxide. I hope you enjoy this uh, introductory lecture around the semiconductor material, I'll give you a whole picture about the element, element semiconductor, silicon germanium, and also the compound semiconductor, gallium arsenide and the gallium nitride. For the gallium arsenide, high speed optoelectronics. For gallium nitride, blue light emitting dial. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thanks for watching.